Artillery has quickly become one of the most important weapons as Ukraine continues to fight off a Russian invasion. Kyiv has started to use the newer Western artillery like the M777 howitzer, but a different kind of weapon has perhaps had a bigger impact. The High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS for short, is a high-tech upgrade for Ukraine that could be a game-changer. As Russian forces try to advance in the Donbass, they too are relying on massive artillery barrages to soften targets. Artillery is often called the king of battle uh, because it's able to destroy targets at greater distances, greater ranges. The introduction of the HIMARS rocket artillery to Ukraine's have, has been significant. Um, that has changed the battlefield quite a lot. The U.S. is providing guided rockets that can hit precise targets up to 50 miles away to go with the 16 M142 HIMARS launchers slated for Ukraine. From what we're seeing, uh, it has been very, very effective because of the reach that Ukrainian artillery lacked and of course the precision. Ukrainian forces have claimed to have already used the HIMARS to take out ammunition dumps, command posts, and other high-value targets. The reason why you have a large ammunition dump close to your front line is because that's honest to goodness what you actually need to maintain an artillery campaign of the scale for which the Russians were conducting. We don't want to uh, cross over a line where we've provided the Ukrainians with uh, so much capability that it in fact uh, could cause the Russians to believe they have to escalate in response. With winter around the corner and the poor fighting conditions that come with it, we're starting to see the tempo of ground assaults and operations in eastern Ukraine uh, intensify. What happens in Ukraine now could make or break Kiev's fortunes against the Russian onslaught. The U.S. has invested heavily in the guided multiple launch rocket system, of which HIMARS is one launcher that can employ these deadly munitions. It's also smaller than the M270 multiple launch rocket system and wheeled, which makes it faster. The Ukrainians have likely degraded the Russians' ability to use artilleries at mass. Uh, in particular, uh, the Ukrainian strikes with the U.S. provided HIMARS uh, rocket artillery systems have actually increased the Ukrainian's military capability to be able to strike um, key Russian military targets, which are necessary for sustaining uh, Russian artillery campaigns. One fear is that giving Ukraine weapons that can be used to strike deep into Russia could lead to nuclear war. The HIMARS system can also launch what is known as the Army Tactical Missile System that can hit targets more than 100 miles away, much further than the rockets currently being provided. Ukraine isn't getting this top-end missile. The U.S. also made striking targets inside of Russia off-limits as a precondition to handing over the HIMARS to avoid escalation. We don't want to get into a situation where we've crossed some kind of red line um, that uh, makes prospects of a direct war between Russia and the United States or Russia and a NATO member much more likely. But we also have to convince Putin that he can't win this on the battlefield, that the United States will back the Ukrainians for as long as necessary with whatever equipment is necessary to make sure that Putin can't win. Training crews to use the system is also a consideration. The Ukrainians were exceptional into adapting these new systems very fast and efficiently. Based on reports that I've seen required only about three weeks of training for the first four systems that came in and then they were uh, able to go straight out into the field and we've seen some success. Giant defense contractor Lockheed Martin makes the HIMARS. It is capable of firing GPS-guided long-range rockets, which are what the U.S. has provided to Ukraine, but it can also fire larger rockets capable of hitting targets hundreds of kilometers away. A deal with Estonia for HIMARS could cost the Baltic nation $500 million. Australia wants to spend up to $385 million to buy some, and Taiwan plans to shell out $430 million for the weapons system. Poland, a NATO ally that borders Ukraine, has also expressed interest in HIMARS. Other buyers include Romania and Singapore. In fiscal year 2022, the U.S. is buying 6,374 items that are considered parts of the guided multiple launch rocket system, which includes HIMARS, at a cost of almost a billion dollars. 
In April, the DoD signed a contract worth over $204 million to buy new M142 systems. With so much demand, the supply chain is stretched to the limit. Even Lockheed Martin has said that they're going to have to ramp up production lines to keep up with what Ukraine needs versus what we need for our own stockpiles. So there is going to have to be some adjusting. And I know that that's a big concern across not just U.S. defense industry, but also um, in Europe as well. Meanwhile, Ukraine is adapting to the realities of adopting dozens of new weapon systems over a short period of time. Ukraine is becoming one of, one of the few countries, and in the future it might be uh, almost the first country in, in well, size-wise in Europe that is so well equipped with NATO standard weapons. And on top of that, it's not part of NATO. As President Joe Biden began a trip to the Middle East in July, Russia's President Vladimir Putin undertook his own trip to Iran. Tehran has developed a potent aerospace industry over the last three decades, and it has specialized in making small guided drones that can be loaded with high explosives. Well, I don't think that it's accidental that Putin uh, has gone to Iran at the very same time that President Biden has gone to the Middle East. He's sending some messages here. As HIMARS continues to destroy key Russian targets, Moscow is looking for ways to offset this newly deployed rocket launcher that could include Iranian-made weapons. They've been able to strike Russian ammunition depots that they've been using to uh, supply their own artillery strikes against Ukraine. And it has had devastating effect uh, on those ammunition depots. Uh, now, I'm quite certain that the Russians are going to make some adjustments here. Iranian weapons could be used to try and find and take out HIMARS or M777 sites by the Russians. So I think what the Russians are likely trying to do is they're trying to increase their intelligence, uh, surveillance, uh, and reconnaissance capability in order to, you know, use their artillery and their other attacks more effectively against Ukrainian forces for corrected strikes. Um, they also, they, the Russians also likely seek uh, new strike capabilities so they can try to take out these higher end Ukrainian systems, which are actually changing the battlefield calculus quite significantly. Ukraine continues to hold out against the Russians and might be launching a counteroffensive soon. This might be sort of uh, the first time that uh, Ukraine is going to, to move uh, and try to re reclaim, uh, reclaim lost land. You've got more precise weaponry at a much greater range, power, and the ability to get out of the way and not be detected, um, all lumped into one capability. So it's very effective. So Russia, I'm, I'm sure, feels very threatened and is feeling uh, that, I think, particularly in the Donbass region where they're using it. Our current assessment is that the Ukrainians are likely setting conditions to conduct the counteroffensive in the South. Um, the South is extremely important for Ukraine, uh, particularly because of the strategic access to the Black Sea uh, waters, because that's very important for Ukraine shipping. Um, you know, if Ukraine is not able to, in the long run, uh, regain and maintain control of those coastal areas with the Black Sea shipping routes, then unfortunately Ukraine will likely be a state that will be um, like in long-term life support without access to that, economically speaking. As the war drags on, a diplomatic solution could be the best bet for peace. So I think what the United States needs to do is to have a strategy to bring this war to an early end. Uh, that means not only convincing the Russians that they can't win on the battlefield, but also showing them that should they make concessions at the negotiating table, that some of the pain that we have inflicted on Russia could be eased.